My name's Brad Sweet. My name's Aiden. Okay. Tell us about your game and playing it and why you liked it and why you wanted us to build this. Um, so how I so how I played the game is I found it and I thought I would like it, so I played it and beat it. So what you have to do is you so this neighbor's hiding something in his basement and so you go and sneak into his house that's about like 2,000 feet tall <laughs> <laughs> and um, and that's what I did and so and then you have to go throughout the house to get to the yeah. basement mm -hmm. you have to find the crowbar and the key card to get in there okay so. gotcha so, so together you guys built kind of the whole house here from yeah. the game okay so that's why I wanted him to build it and I also helped. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well then do you want to take us through kind of the design features of the house and some of the different levels here? Yes, I can do that. Uh, my son's idea along with Aiden's idea was to create the house and we put a poster here because ultimately we knew, we knew some people wouldn't know Hello Neighbor and they wouldn't know how the house evolved over time. Mm -hmm. So what I did about three or four months ago was I tried to think about how, what, what size the base plates needed to be. So I laid out the floor plan on the base plates and ultimately built the first two stories up to about here, trying to realize how high this thing was gonna be when I, when I got it all the way up, realizing there's a windmill on the top. And so I built kind of Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays and ordered on Brinklink, Bricklink on Monday to order the parts I needed. But ultimately, there are many components to the house. It's kind of, some people have told me it's like a Winchester house in California where the woman added building after building, which made no sense. This is the same way. And so some of the harder parts are trying to get the roller coaster to attach at three different areas. Mm -hmm. Two wouldn't have been tough, but three is really difficult. And so we have a little tram here that I, I haven't figured out how to make it come up yet without mucking the front of the house up but so each little section is done separately it's like a modular house and so it comes apart it ships easy enough but you can see I've put the little Mtron piece in there I've done the other little Easter egg with the brickling thing up there uh, as you notice there's uh, uh, the piece up Quite there. possibly the best feature yes, of the bed <laughs> oh absolutely <laughs> Uh, we had a difficult time trying to think about the windmill and how to get it to move. Because in the game, here, this silver piece actually spins. Okay. And there was no way in the world I could think of to get it to spin, to then spin that windmill. Mm -hmm. So my son came up with the idea of putting a motor at the top using the uh, GBC controller, 9-volt controller, and making it go as slow as we could. because. It is seven blades, not eight, and so it's naturally not balanced. Okay. And some of the blades, four of them are long and three of them are short. <laughs> and so we didn't do the inside because I was very concerned I couldn't get the outside done in time. So I, I really focused on that. So it was a labor of love. There's a lot of color in it, which I like. Uh, the car, again, was my son's idea to take the penguin car and change it from white to red. Okay. And so we did that. You had to do a few modifications because you can't always get the same pieces. Uh, we did try to put Hello Neighbor in a minifig in the, at the door down there. A lot of the black wire is simply when he built the house, he, he ran the wire outside of the house. That and over on the lights over here, uh, there's different pieces in back. Uh, the back is relatively flat. And up at the top to get to the windmill, you had to actually get a record player from in the house, bring the record player up to the top, play the record player, it would shrink the plants. <laughs> that would allow then you to bring it up here. You had to actually climb to the top of the windmill to come over here to get the apple seed, to plant the apple seed <laughs> down in the brown piece, which would grow the golden apple. Okay, so it's like a whole like, scavenger hunt sort oh, oh, of yes. thing, puzzle. Yeah, absolutely. It's, <laughs> It's so one of those things where you have to go room to room. If you get caught by the hello neighbor, basically he comes to your face, but ultimately you just appear across the street in your house. Okay. And then you come back in. 
Sometimes you keep your stuff, sometimes you don't. But it, it's not a bloody game per se. It's simply a game where it's a little bit scary and then you appear across the street and keep going. So, so it was a lot of fun. He enjoyed playing the game and we thought it would be neat to bring it here because we knew a lot of the kids would really enjoy it. Yeah, it's, it's a great game. So talk a little bit more. One thing that really stands out as well is like the chrome piping, the silver piping. Yeah. So are those pieces difficult to get a hold of and kind of fix out like you wanted? Well, as you can see on the map, he has done a lot of water uh, piping. There's some. There's a shark tank in one of the, <laughs> the things. And so I would say I probably had half the pieces at home from previous uh, kits and those type of things. Are, there's nothing hard to get if you go to Bricklink. It's just expensive. <laughs> and the chrome pieces are expensive okay. because there are only a certain number of sets that are there. So if, if you're doing builds like this, I looked into that. I looked at alternate ways to do it. I did buy some things from Germany where they were probably cheaper than the U.S. But, of course, then you got to pay postage, mm -hmm. you know. And so it's that balance. Uh, it's certainly not exactly in the shape it was there but it's self-standing and uh, I think it really adds to the feature of the house having it look chrome versus trying to do some other color. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's a great build and I love what you, you know, used to inspire it. I think that's great. It translates to Lego so nicely with the colors and everything and the cool shapes of the house. So thanks so much for bringing it to the show and thanks for chatting with me. All right. Thank you very much.